We thank you for your Holy Spirit. I ask that as I speak this wonderful, powerful, anointed word that you have placed in my heart, I decrease that you may have the increase. And in doing so, God, we just want to say thank you for all that you are going to do in this service. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let me just slow down. Hallelujah. I feel a anointing already up here. I, let me just take my time this morning. I want to use for a thought today. I want to talk about that battlefield protection. Battlefield protection. How many understand that you need some protection while you're on the battlefield? Because the enemy is out to take you out. I say the enemy is out to take you out. When thinking about the schemes of the devil, we know that the devil does so many things in the background. He, he studies us. He has different tactics. And we're not to be ignorant of the enemy devices because the devil has so many schemes to use and utilize against the people of God. And did you know that all the warnings in the New Testament about conflicts with Satan and his demons are addressed only to Christians. Why? Because Jesus said that he is the only way to God. I said he is the only way to God. The Bible said if any man come another way, he comes as a thief and a robber. And so Satan do, does not want you to get to know Jesus as your personal Savior. Even as we celebrate uh, this season of, 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 and this particular time, we just celebrated Christmas, talking about uh, the celebration of Jesus' birthday. But everybody didn't come together to celebrate the birthday of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Jesus was out of the picture out of a lot of homes. But it's all about Jesus, saints of God. The enemy uses different schemes. And since Jesus is the only way, the enemy wants to do everything possible to keep people from believing that this really is the truth. And so our enemy is so committed to doing everything possible to make us ineffective in our personal lives and in our ministries for our Lord and Savior. And I know that being a, a minister of God, we as being men and people of God, if God, if God has called you in any arena of ministry, you ought to always be alert. You ought to always be able to uh, make yourself available when God calls you to do something for him. Why? Because the enemy wants to stop you from doing what God has called you to do. Praise the Lord. And so if we are ineffective, then we hurt God and we help the devil. And the reason for coming under so many demonic attacks is to get us to be poor witnesses to the world about the character of the God that we serve. We are representative, representatives of Jesus Christ, aren't we? And so Satan, he knows full well that he has already been de defeated at the cross and that his time is limited, saints of God. Because he knows this, he will be using every means he can to keep the believers from, from believing this truth. And only eternity will reveal the number of Christians who have led unproductive frustrated and, and fruitless lives because of their unwillingness to fight Satan. Only eternity will reveal the number of Christians who have been forced to forsake their ministries because of the attacks of the enemy. When you look at 1 Peter 5, verse 8 and 9, it talks about as people of God, we should be a self-controlled and alert because your enemy, the devil, the Bible says that he prowls around like a roaring lion 
looking for someone who devour him. The Bible says that we should resist him and stand firm in the faith. And when it comes to dealing with, the, with Satan, the problem we are having today is that too many people have the wrong idea concerning the word resist. Are you with me today? Somewhere along the way, resisting Satan got changed to the word ignore Satan. Where did we ever get the idea that the best approach to dealing with the enemy is to dismiss and ignore him as nothing more than pure fantasy or theological myth? So when the devil attacks you, don't be ignorant, don't be uh, dismissive, and don't be uh, uh, not concerned because the enemy, he is, he's in the background and he's cooking up something to come against you. Believe it or not, he is cooking up something to come against you. And so passive, passive neglect is a poor tactic to use against an adversary who blatantly and frequently refuses to be ignored and who refuses to go unrecognized. And so surviving the enemy's challenge to come back is not a task to be, to be taken lightly. Satan is a cunning and relentless adversary. A devious wizard whose mastery of evils enables him to uh, fashion lewd temptations or flying, firing darts with amazing accuracy. Uh huh. When you look at Job and you look at Joshua and you study uh, Daniel's life and you look at David and the Apostle Paul, where men who had real and convincing experiences that proved to them that they were not immune to the wiles of a real devil. And if these great saints of the Bible were vulnerable to the trouble caused by Satan, then why should we think that we are to expect anything less? Don't you understand that any time that you take upon the name of Jesus, you take upon a cross, you take upon suffering, you take upon struggling, but if you suffer with him, you're going to reign with him. This is not a time that the people of God should throw in the towels and say uncle to the devil, but this is a time where believers should learn how to rise to the occasion to give the devil a black eye. Can I say it? Can somebody say amen? amen? And so the greatest example of all is the audacity of, of, of Satan to even tempt the Son of God even in the wilderness. How many know that if Jesus was tempted 40 days and 40 nights, how many of you understand that you're going to be tempted as well? And if Satan is brazen enough to get into the face of Christ, why should we expect him to steer clear of us? Why? Because Satan wants to keep you from fulfilling your God-given purpose for which you were created. He wants to keep you from using the power of God to, over to overcome his attack so you will stay in bondage and defeat. The devil wants you to stay in bondage. He don't want you to be liberated. He does not want you to be free. He wants you to be bound. That's the reason, young people, he, he, he wants to keep you in a state feeling like you don't have anybody or you're not protected. He wants you to remain in a state where you are vulnerable to him. He want, he's looking for uh, open places in your life. He's looking for places so that you can fall into his trap, so that you can yield to the temptations, uh huh, so that he can have something against you and to use against you. Hallelujah. So we as people of God, we have to wake up. We need a spiritual awakening, saints of God. And we need to be about our Father's business, saints of God. Because the enemy, he wants to take us out. Why? Because he hates us. 
He hates us. He wants to keep you from using the power of God to overcome his attacks so you will stay in bondage and defeat. You, he, does, he, he does not want your lifestyle to be a life of victory. And since believers are the spiritually commissioned and empowered army of God, demonstrating the power of God by living victorious, uh, fruitful, and, and godly lives, Satan must seek to neutralize them at any cost. He goes out at any cost, and he uses different people and uh, different uh, people from all over the world and evil people. He, he, he works in the children of, uh, of, of unbelief. Hallelujah. And so, them's that are disobedient to the word of God, he uses them. <coughs> he uses them to the max. He uses them to the maximum to maximize his purpose and defeat over their lives. And, and so they yield because they have an open spot where they're so vulnerable that they, they don't care. And so uh, this is the whole reason why Satan is on the attack against Christians, especially those who are pressing the spiritual battle on the front line. Although we will never be immune from the attacks from the enemy, there are things we can do to keep ourselves from becoming a bullseye for one of Satan's targets. There are six things. I'm going to give you six things. I'm going to give them to you real fast that we can adapt to our lives that will promise a battlefield protection to help reduce our chances of becoming vulnerable to Satan. First of all, number one, just write that in your tab, we must cultivate humility. We must cultivate humility. The scripture presents humility as a divine requirement and an endearing characteristic for the Christian. Why is it that we should be humble, saints of God? Micah 6 and 8, he says, the Lord has already told you what is good, and this is what he requires, to do what is right. How many want to do what's right? Amen. To love mercy, to walk humbly with your God. Pride was the lethal poison that sent Lucifer falling from the sky like lightning. This is why I come he was overthrown from heaven, and, and God got rid of him just that quick because he wanted to overtake heaven. And a third of those angels went along with him just that quick. And so, glory to God. This is why we should stay humble, saints of God, because God does not want us to walk a life of being, being prideful. Pride was the lethal poison that sent Lucifer uh -huh, from the sky. And so this is why, according to 1 Peter 5 and 5, the Bible said that God abhors pride and is drawn to humility. This is why it is so important to remember that if we want to resist the devil, we had better first make sure that God is not resisting us. Did y'all get that? Amen. Humility, it, it, it comes from seeing God and the devil for who they really are. Humility, it comes from acknowledging, acknowledging that Satan's power is such that we cannot defeat him in our own strength ever. Don't ever think that you're going to defeat the devil in your own energy and in your own strength. The devil will wear you out. Yeah. Pastor, I, I, I know I'm strong. I don't, I don't care how many of them boyfriends come in my life. Let me tell you something. The devil, he got the right one to come. Praise the Lord. I don't care how many girlfriends uh, you, you know, uh, wrote out. But he, there's one 
praise the Lord, that can get your eye. So don't think you're that you're still too strong in your flesh. Don't ever put confidence in your flesh. Because your flesh will tell you who the strongest. And the one you feed the most, that's the one going to win. Y'all ain't got to say that. Y'all ain't got to say that. <laughs> Humility, it, it comes from acknowledging that Christ's power is such that Satan cannot defeat him in his own strength ever. Underestimating any of these two supernatural truths will lead to certain defeat. And so the first thing we can adapt to our lives through battlefield protection is to cultivate humility. If you want to be in a position where God wants to raise you up, you got to stay low. I mean, no, you got to stay low. Praise the Lord. The second thing we can adapt to in our lives for battlefield protection is to walk in obedience. How many know that God wants you to be obedient in every area of your life? I know some areas we... We still got some processing to do, and that's okay. That's okay. But you got to take it one day at a time. Some may consider this requirement too general. But the, but the hard fact is human presumption is among the most common attractors to the demonic. Oh, okay. So in the arena of spiritual warfare, the devil is concerned less about the words cast in his direction than about who is the one doing the talking. In, in 1 Samuel 15 and 22, the prophet Samuel, he declared that to obey God is what? Better than sacrifice. For one simple reason, with sacrifice, now watch this, with sacrifice, we decide what God will get. Did y'all hear me? With obedience, we give God what he asked for. You see, spiritual obedience allows God to defend his own purposes. And so, that's why uh, the second thing we can adapt to in our lives for battlefield protection is to be obedient to God. Y'all, when I get up in the morning, I want to obey God. My flesh may be telling me to go left, but if God said go right, I'm going right. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. When you get up in the morning and you look up in the mirror, you tell the mirror that you're going to be exactly what God has called you to be. You got to speak to your own self and say, I'm not going to get up this morning and I'm not going to be no liar. I'm not going to be no crook. I'm not going to be no thief. No, when I look in the mirror, I'm going to declare some things in my own life. I'm going to look in that mirror and say, mirror, I am a re reflection of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'm going to be obedient to God's word. And if God's word says to walk in purity and walk in holiness, that's what I'm going to declare in my own life. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Praise the Lord. So the third thing we can adapt to our lives for battle fear protection is to put on our spiritual army on a daily basis. Some of y'all, are, are you, 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 you don't have enough clothes on. You just got a hat. <laughs> Half set of clothes on. Right, right. But God wants you to have all your clothes on. Amen. And, 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 and I'm not talking from the natural eye, uh, even though that's, that is too. But I'm talking more of the spiritual eye. Yeah. Sometimes we don't have anything on, and that's the reason why come the devil is wearing us out. Right. It is astonishing to learn how many Christians go through their lives each day without wearing their spiritual armor. And the most common reason seems to be simple carelessness. People just don't think about literally putting on their spiritual armor. A lot of the reasoning behind this is due to a 
misguided assumption that divine protection is a guaranteed byproduct of godly service. No, there are some things that God has ordained for you to put on for yourself. Right. How many know that you got to apply yourself to this? Yes. Some of y'all say, oh, well, Pastor, I ain't growing. Uh, I, I'm not growing at all. I'm in a place where I'm not growing. But I want to ask you a question. How many of times do you attend church? <laughs> if you only come to church once a month, you're not going to grow. That's right, Bishop. If you're busy about it in everybody else's business, going from house to house, you're not going to grow. If you're around a bunch of folk who trying to find fault in everybody every day, you're not going to grow. Come on, Bishop. Oh, y'all ain't hear me today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But we're not growing. You know why you're not growing? Because you, 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 you have made yourself useful for the devil. You have given your vessel to a, a wicked person. And, and, and the devil have a pronounced of curses over your life. And, and you are walking under the curse and the spell of a, of a witch. Why? Because you have opened yourself up to some, some wicked stuff in your life. But, Pastor, I'm not growing. Well, let me tell you how to grow. First of all, number one is admit that you need help. Yes. Admit that you ain't been doing what you're supposed to do. Repent. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. Get right with God. When you get your mind right, then you'll do what God has called you to do. That's right. Get right. And let's go home, church. Come on, somebody. Then start coming to the, the Bible studies and learning the scriptures and uh, watch yourself, apply yourself daily in the word of God. Read your scripture when you on your own time. Don't trust the pastor to, to do all the preaching and the teaching. You need to learn some stuff on your own. Come on, somebody. You're wearing the pastor's out. Pray, pray for me, pastor. I'm so weak. You know why you're so weak? Hallelujah. You need to pray yourself. That's right. That's right. It's not the pastor's fault if you're not victorious. We blame everybody for our failures but ourselves. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. So, a lot of the reason behind this is due to a misguided assumption. Hallelujah. That divine protection is a guaranteed byproduct of godly service. You see, let me tell you, my friend, spiritual armor is not an optional accessory. Those who chose to dismiss it do so as their own risk. And so, Paul, he summed up what the armor is in four simple words. He says in 1 Corinthians 15 and 31, he said, y'all want those four words? Y'all yeah. act like y'all don't want them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here's what he said. I die every day. Y'all don't want that, do you? I die every day. How many of you know you got to kill your flesh every day? It's a denying. It's a denying of your flesh. I die every day. I die so that I can win others, so I can please God. Putting on the full armor of God is synonymous with daily surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You got to live a life that is surrendered to God. Rather than visualizing literal helmets and breastplates and, and shields, simply de dedicate the first conscious thoughts each morning to the will of God. Lord, let your will be done in my life. And so spiritual armor becomes a lifestyle when, for the balance of the day, we choose to walk in the consciousness of God's presence and purpose. And so we learned that the third thing that we can adapt to in our lives for battlefield protection 
is to put on our spiritual armor on a daily basis. You got to put it on every day, saints of God. God does not want us taking a break. Amen. And that's where a lot of us have went wrong. We, we, we went on break and we never came back to work. And that's why some of y'all fired. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. Y'all ain't going to be that mad at me today? The fourth thing we can do to adapt to our lives for God's protection is to maintain spiritual accountability. One of the most unhealthy habits of a Christian is to try to live as spiritual as a spiritual lone ranger. How many know you need people in your life to help you? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We need people in our life to impart in us. We need people in our life to lay hands upon us, to agree with us, to pray with us. Because there is going to come a time in your life where you're going to get weak and you need to lay hands upon Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible said, let the strong bear the infirmity of them that are weak. You need someone, you need a friend. You need someone who is trustworthy. And you need somebody that won't have your business all over town. Right, man. Right. Hallelujah. You don't need nobody that's stabbing you in the back. Every time you tell them your business, uh, it, uh, you told them something sacred. Now, uh, did you know every all the houses down the street know your business now? Thanks to God, we need to learn how to keep our mouth quiet. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I hope I said something to help somebody in that area. Holy Ghost, help us to keep our mouth quiet. Holy Ghost, help us to keep our mouth sealed when we need to shut up. Holy Ghost, help us. Praise the Lord. And so uh, we, need, we need people that can hold us accountable. Those who adopt this mentality, who feel like they, they, they're, they're, they don't need anybody, their mentality are only invited Satan into the deepest recesses of their very beings. You need to change the way you think. We need a friend in life. While we are entitled to our perspective on things, we must also uh, be willing to admit that our view is limited by habitually rejecting the counsel and insight of the church, God's word, and other believers. We become easy targets for the master of all deception. Uh, we, we feel like, well, we don't have to go to church anymore. We don't need to be in the presence of the Lord anymore. Don't forget to assemble yourself in the house of the Lord. So we become easy targets. It's amazing how since COVID-19 has been in the land, I see people all in the shopping malls. I see people, they even going to the clubs. Every club ain't closed yet. There's some clubs still open, even though they social distance. They go to the club. They have every excuse to go everywhere. But when it comes to the house of God and the church, social distance as well. I can't go to church. I don't want the virus. Well, you didn't get it in the club. I saw you at Walmart the other day. You were in the restaurant, and, and, and they weren't even social distance. Come on, Bishop, talk about it. Hello, somebody. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it may be somebody at the church that got it. Well, you didn't get it. I speak over the house of God. Yeah. Yeah. That the blood of Jesus will cover every area in this house. Yeah. Yeah. That it will not come near you. If you get it, it won't be at the temple of prayer. If you get it, it's going to be because you went to the club. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so, we become...
become easy targets for the master of deception. And spiritual accountability with each other is to establish guardrails to keep us out of trouble and to be a safety net in case we do stumble into it. Here's what Hebrews 10 and 25 says. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage and warn each other, especially now that the day of his coming back again is drawing near. And so the fourth thing we can adapt to our lives for battlefield protection is to maintain spiritual accountability. I only got two more. The fifth thing we can adapt to our lives for battlefield protection is to establish faithful prayer support. Some of y'all ain't prayed in, in a long time. I'm so weak, I can't pray anymore, Pastor. Why come you can't pray? Hallelujah. Tell me why you can't pray. Why don't you have a, a, a prayer life? If you say you got the Holy Ghost, why don't you have a prayer life? If you say you're walking in the Spirit and you're not fulfilling the lust of the flesh, why don't you have a prayer life? If you, if you say you're so spiritual, why can't you talk to God? You talk to everybody else. You know, it's something about how we so spiritual, we can speak in tongues. Oh, yeah, we can do that real good, but we can't speak to each other. We can't pray to each other. We can't pray for each other. <laughs> we, pray, we are supposed to pray with, for the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah, they did you wrong. Yeah, they done lied on you and talked about you, but still pray for them. Yes, yes. yes they may be bastards, <laughs> but still pray for them bastards. That ain't cussing either. That's the word of God. Pray for them. Pray. Because they bastard you. And it, 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 it may take your prayer to get them out of hell. That's right. The prayer, the Bible said that the prayers of the righteous ones are very much. Pray for them that despitefully use you. Y'all are bastards. Some have even blasphemed God. Pray for them. Pray for them. Oh, I can't pray for them. Why come? They, they praying against you. Why come you can't pray for them? They, 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 they naysayers. They hate us. Haters of, of, of those that do good. Why come you can't pray for them? You need to pray for them because they need Jesus. Hallelujah. And somebody prayed you out when you was in your mess too. Amen. And this is why we, 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 I'm, I'm not as judgmental as I, I, as I used to be because I understand that I don't care where, where, where you are with God, whatever position that you hold, amen, there is something that God will allow in your life, amen, to change the way you think about things. Amen. A death of a loved one, a change you in a minute. Amen. It'll change the way you think. It'll change your ways. It'll change your talk. Amen. That's why we should live holy every day. Some people, they don't want to. The only time that they think about living holy is some tragic situation come in their lives. That's the wrong time. You should have been praying. We don't want to have a form of godliness. And deny the power of God. Amen. We don't want to have a form of godliness. But then we deny the power of God. If you're going to be who you are with God. Be real with God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Some of the stuff that this, this, this generation is doing. Ain't no way. I, I No. I'm scared to do some stuff. We, we have lost the fear of God. I said we have lost the fear and the respect of God. Yes. We come into the house with a wrong mentality. We come into the house with a wrong mindset. We, 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 we indulge in everything that the world is, is indulging in, and we think we are right. We have lost the respect of God. 
I can't do some stuff that I, I can't even go some places where some of y'all go. The Bible said, don't let your good be evil spoken of. Yeah. It's quiet in here. Huh? Praise the Lord. The Lord help me to preach today. Hallelujah. So, Jesus is, I'm trying to tell you, Jesus is getting ready to come back, baby. And I love you so much. I love you so much that I don't want you to be in that number with the goats. Because Jesus is going to do the separate. Amen. Let the, the wheats and the tares grow together. But Jesus is going to do the separate. I want you to be in that right now. And I tell you the truth because I want to stay in the will of God. God going to hold me accountable if I don't tell you the truth. Amen. 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 All of our failures are prayer failures. Look at what James 4, 2 and 3 says. The reason you don't have what you want is that you don't ask God for it. And even when you do ask, you don't get it because your whole motive is wrong. Did y'all get that? In other words, how when we when we pray, how do we approach God? Since I am the bishop, you got to do this. He ain't got to do nothing. Sometimes our motive is wrong. <laughs> Lord, make me a millionaire. Why, why do you want to be a millionaire when you're not even a tithe? Why, why would you want God to make you a, mil, a billionaire when you can't even first consider God? So you can spend all of your money on the world? What profit is it to gain the whole world and then lose your soul? So even if you had a billion dollars, you, you probably wouldn't know what to do with it yourself. You're wasted. Just like a prodigal son, you're wasted. You, you're not ready for that yet. Hallelujah. And even, hallelujah, you, you won't, you see, when we come to God with the wrong motive, you want only what we will give you. You want only what's going to give you pleasure. Let me just say it that way. You see, that's why it is a necessary, a necessity to pray. Because prayer is the gymnasium for the soul. Did y'all get that? Prayer is the gymnasium for the soul. We need to go to the gym and work out every day. And I'm not saying that in a physical way, amen. Because I'm getting, I'm getting pretty fit, fit in the physical, in the, uh, you know. I mean, the bodily exercise profit nothing, but it do profit a little bit. Amen. But, but I want my soul right. I want my heart right with God. I want God to say when I walk before the throne of judgment, I want God to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I don't want God to say, depart from me. Your work is in iniquity. I don't know you. I don't know. Well, pastor, I've been in the church for 30 years. I know God know me, do we? That's the problem. You've been in you've been in the way for 30 years. <laughs> Stopping other folks from getting to Jesus. But have you did anything the last 30 years of your life? Really? Being proof? Some of us, we, 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 we're in the church, but 
we're sowing discord. We're, 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 we're dividing the congregation up. Get out of these cliques. I promote unity in this house. Amen. I am not ignorant. The devil is cutting. I know some devils in that church. I know some, they, they 
must have been in the club with them. How you know they was in the club?
God want us to be faith takers, be water walkers, get out of the boat, learn how to walk on the water. I can't do that, Pastor. Maybe not. But with faith, you can do all things. And so the sixth and final thing we can adapt to in our lives about being protected. We got to learn how to take godly risks, even when other people don't understand it. Six things we can adapt to our lives. This is going to pro 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 promise battlefield protection to help us reduce our chances of becoming vulnerable to Satan. Let me tell you something. This is why we should work while it's day. Nighttime is coming, you're not going to be able to work. Work while it's day. Quit being a busybody. Be a busybody for Jesus. Deuteronomy, last scripture I'm going to give to you, and I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to I'm give, give you a chance to be blessed. Deuteronomy 20, verse 1. When you go out to fight your enemies, and you face an army greater than your own, look what he says. Do not, let me repeat this, do not be afraid. So what, they outnumber you. So what, do not be afraid. I was telling somebody the other day, I would rather pastor the people that God has that is genuine to me And I, would, I, 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 I want to pastor everybody that comes through the door, but everybody that comes through the door is not going to remain. And I understand that as being a pastor. But when I have people that are close to me, I really, really want somebody that is truth worthy, that got my back when I need it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Them Judas spirits got to go. They talking about you, then they stabbing you in the back, and they selling you out for 30 pieces of silk. Now the rest of y'all can be members. But, but I need a close, I need a close group of people that I can really trust. that has the vision of the church, that has the vision of the pastor. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want this for the church, but you you come, you want, you, you try to go, I got my own vision. Um, I'm going to tear up this church. I'm going to make sure they don't listen to Bishop Brown. Um, Bishop Brown is the one that's praying for you. Yes. It's time for Christians to let go of the security that the tree trunk of life provides in order to venture out onto the branches. Going out on a limb not only takes us to where the fruit is on the branch, but it will prevent us from being picked off by the enemy. Yeah. As any skill hunter will tell you, there is nothing easier to hit than a stationary target. I'm through. I said this, saints of God. You know where you are with God. I know where I am with God. Why not learn how to be our brother's keeper wherever we are with God? If we see someone that is not there yet. The church, I, I, I keep saying this, the church is a hospital. And there are going to always be people in the church that haven't got to where you are. The church is not for perfect people. The church is for the, the ones that are sick. I want the sick people to come so that they can, they can heal. They need the medicine the most. I want liars. I want 
crooks. I want thieves. Now they can't be they can't be on the staff now.